Oh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the morning routine. It's Wednesday morning, August 29th, 2018, episode number 418. And yes, the countdown is on three days left together, today being the one of the three. So uh, it's very strange after yesterday's more early morning announcement when we got, uh, got together that uh, the morning routine will be ending this Friday. It's very strange. It's been very difficult for me though the last 24 hours to really soak it in that I'm that I'm going to be stopping doing something. I was having a great conversation with really good friends last night. Just breaking it all down and I'm like, you know, the easiest thing for me to do would be to keep going. It's hard to actually stop, but I'm stopping with intention and uh, you know, it's it's a uh, it's it's actually very difficult to do. Man, I love you guys and love joining with you guys each and every day. So, uh, but here we are. We're on the countdown and it's Wednesday. It's hump day, middle of the week. I hope your week is going exceptionally well. I hope your Monday and Tuesday were everything that you wanted them to be <clears throat> for what they were. I'm not saying that, you know, you, you were in, uh, you know, on the beaches of Hawaii soaking in the sun, but for what they were, I hope they were what you wanted. You know, I hope things are going your way. So interesting thought out of the shower. Shower thought uh, for the hustle. Cows, this is le- this is great. Cows must be really happy. Their favorite food is all over the ground. It's almost like walking on tacos for us. Yes. Could you imagine if your favorite food covered the ground and you just walked around like gobble, gobble, like in a field of lasagna? Little Garfield action there, you know? So I don't know, but kind of cool, you know? So uh, I'm digging it, but. Anyways, I've got some stuff going on this morning. I got some stories for you, as always, lined up for you this morning on the morningroutine.live. As always, morningroutine.live, you can go there and visit all the articles there. Sad to say, I will keep that site and all the articles there, even though we're ending this Friday, and Friday will be our last episode together on the morning routine. Uh, all The site will stay live. All the articles will be there. It's fully searchable. You can find it whenever you want, so it will be there. But that said, let's move on, guys. The first story I have for you today is out of Atlas Obscura, one of my favorite places to get uh, content. The complicated business of farming snails in America. Hey, good morning, Jody. How are you? It's good to see you. Haven't seen you. I was thinking about you the other day. I haven't seen you guys in forever. Congrats on your daughter getting into college and getting all settled. That's very exciting. Or wait, that was last year, right? This, maybe I saw that this is her second year. Anyways, still good to see you. Complicated business of farming snails in America, guys. Farming, as in with intention. Snails. Mm. It doesn't take more than uh, weekend visits. Snails can thrive without much loving care on our part. No kidding, they're all over the place outside and I haven't done anything. So, the common garden snail, it's smaller than the canned escargot. The petite gris, is that how you say that? Is that how you say that petite gris, P-E-T-I-T-G-R-I-S, or or is it some kind of a fancier way of saying it? Anyways, the petite gris is more tender and more palatable and requires less processing than the escargot. Hmm. It's also healthier for the planet and our bodies than most sources of farmed animal protein. A serving of 100 grams has only 90 calories and snails are lower in fat than salmon. They also require microscopic grazing range. This particular farm only uses half an acre of land. Still sounds disgusting. I got to be honest with you. Like, I believe in the idea of eating healthier. I, I believe in the idea of it. I try. I'm not 100% successful. I do try. But I'm not eating snails. Even it's the healthiest thing on the planet. I'm sorry. It ain't happening. Maybe the best thing about snails as a food for Americans is that the common garden snail is an invasive species found in 20 states. I don't know about that. Anyways, this farm shelters the eggs indoors, raising the baby snails, which have shells from the start, until they're large enough to live in an outdoor shade house. He feeds the snails organic vegetables that he grows and shares his food with them. It takes them a year to be fully mature. Sounds gross. I don't know, but this is an interesting part. Because the snails are an agricultural pest, the U.S. Department of Agriculture tightly controls their interstate movement. The farm can't ship live snails even to a state that's already infested. 
that doesn't even make sense. Like these snails are everywhere, but if you bring them across the state lines, you get in trouble. I don't know, but whatever. So that's our snail story for today. I don't know. Not a big fan. So a little uh, next story I have, it's not exciting. I got to be honest. It's more interesting. We've been hearing a lot about tariffs and the trade and stuff that's going on. Yesterday, the USDA announced that they're going to be buying like one point five something billion dollars worth of produce from farms who weren't able to ship it to export it and they're you know worried about losing the money that the, because their business is built on exports so now the government is going to buy it to hold them up i mean there's a lot of stuff going on with these tariffs and stuff good morning my parents good to see you this morning um so this is going on with these export and all these tariffs this is a little story just of one little thing affected it's out of the guardian Giant shipload of soya beans circles off China. Victim of trade war with U.S. A massive ship. Listen, this is just interesting. A shipment of soybeans worth more than $20 million has been bombing, a bombing, bombing aimlessly in the Pacific Ocean for a month. A casualty of the trade war between China and the U.S. The peak Pegasus is a 229-meter bulk carrier weighing 43 Thousand? Yeah, 43,000 tons. The ship was scheduled to unload uh, soya beans in the Chinese port of Dalian on July 6th, shortly after Trump imposed the first round of tariffs. As it rushed to the shore in hopes of clearing customs before Beijing retaliated, the ship became an unlikely internet sensation. The vessel arrived just too late and now has been sailing in circles waiting for the cargo's owners to find a place to get it unloaded because the tariffs that Beijing put in place would cost an additional $6 million to get these things unloaded. So this ship is just circling in the ocean with no home, a victim of the tariff war. Kind of interesting. There's a lot of things going on with this thing that we don't realize. That one that I saw yesterday where we're now going to be buying produce from farmers, the U.S., our tax dollars, now buying all this produce from farmers because they couldn't export it is, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I have opinions, but I'm not knowledgeable enough to say that they're educated opinions. So there you have it. But last little story I have for you this morning is that a CNN money. Yes. The headline, Beards are back. That's bad news for Gillette. You think so, maybe? American men are not shaving with old-fashioned razors like they used to, says the uh, subtitle. More men are growing full beards, goatees, or stubble, while others who once shaved every day before work feel comfortable occasionally skipping out as taboo about facial hair at the office fades. This is totally... I mean, you see it everywhere, right? The, the stubble. It's, it's everywhere. If it's not a big beard, it's at least stubble. Procter & Gamble believes it's easier for men today to avoid a shave during the work week or on a casual weekend. Today, men are not judged negatively when they skip a shave. It is not considered lazy or disrespectful. Interesting note, if you ever read the book um, Dress for Success, it talks about shaving. Shaving, if you have facial hair, the your trustworthiness uh, level drops like major for a stranger or somebody who doesn't know you, if they're looking and judging you. If you have facial hair, they think you're hiding something and they distrust you automatically because of facial hair. That seems to have changed. Shaving attitudes differ by a by age group, but men under 45 have taken a more relaxed approach. Guys increasingly want to portray a laid back look. And many believe facial hair is popular, authentic, and attractive. Right? So it's true though, but everybody, athleisure being the fastest growing segment of clothing is a way that women can do the same thing to have that laid back approach, right? While men are also wearing athleisure, but also getting a little stubble on their face. Although the slowdown seems trivial, manual razor and blade sales in the United States slipped each of the past three years. Razor sales are way down. So I would love to grow a little stubble. Um, and I do get it once in a while, but I got to keep it clean shaven because my, my honey poo doesn't like the scratch. So, but there you go. Anyways, those are our stories for today. Let's move on, my friends, to 
The Google Trends, the top 10 most searched things yesterday on Google. Number one, Earthquake Today with over 1 million searches. Yes, a 4.4 earthquake shook Southern California yesterday. Number two, Andrew Gillum. Uh, number three, Aretha Franklin Funeral. Yes, that's coming up. Number four, Paige Butcher. Number five, Operation Finale. Must be a TV show. Number six, Roy Oliver. Uh, oh, that's that uh, that uh, officer in Texas. Number seven, Louis C.K. is in at number seven. Number eight is Rachel Hundley. Number nine is Arizona Primary. Number 10 is Kevin Owens, which is a, a worldwide uh, WWE wrestling thing. Man, I got to be honest, top 10 Google Trends, very untrendworthy. I mean, let's just say it, you know? I mean, besides the earthquake today, I mean, really, what else is there, you know? So, well, Aretha Franklin funeral, absolutely. She was uh, definitely a special lady, so I could see that one too. But anyways, that's all right. Let's move on, guys, to a passage of wisdom. Slow things down just to hear this morning, and let's start moving forward. Today's passage is yet another passage that I wanted to share with you guys of encouragement. Uh... I just want to finish this week off with as much courage. There's so many things of encouragement that you can find in Scripture, and sometimes we look past it. And I don't. I just want to finish this week off with as much of it as I can. This passage is pretty straightforward. It comes right out of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, God says. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire... You will not be burned. This is a passage talking about no matter where you go, he's with you if you want him to be. And he will protect you and guide you. You may feel what's going on. And you may go through tough times. It's not saying you will never go through a tough time ever in your life. Notice it says when you walk through fire, means you're in the fire. But you will not be burned, he says. When you pass through the rivers, you could be afraid. You might feel like you're about to drown, but they will not sweep over you because he will carry you through. God will be with you through everything that you go through, whether it's a tough time like walking through a river or walking through fire, or let's not forget the great moments in our life when we usually don't look and say, thank you so much for this great thing that you're guiding me through, Instead, we seem to only do that when we're going through tough times. They're like, where are you? We need you, right? But he is with you no matter where you go, as long as you want him to be. What a great, it's just a great passage of encouragement, man. I love it, you know? So now, does that mean go jump in a fire because you're not going to get burned? That's not what this says. So there's my little disclaimer. But uh, anyway, so guys, let's pray. And let's get this day started. Father, good morning. Father, we thank you for this fine Wednesday, this end of the uh, month of August, this great season that you've given us so far as 2018 is uh, trucking right along. Father, we thank you for this passage and your words today. The great encouragement that you will be with us through the toughest times in our life. You're right there next to us, holding us up, carrying us through. And you'll ensure that we come out the other side. Father, we thank you for the moments in our life that are very difficult to go through. For you being with us and ensuring that on the outside, when we come through them, that we're better and stronger and useful in different ways than we were before. It's hard to pray that. It's hard to thank you for that, Father, because I... <laughs> We, I, nobody likes to go through difficult times. But we do thank you for being there with us as we go through them. Father, be with us today as we go out into our workforce. Go out into the do the things that we do on a regular weekday. That we find opportunities to be an encouragement to other people. That we find an opportunity to remind other people that God is with us every step of the way. Help us to be an encouragement. Help us to be the hands and feet of your great works that you have planned for us. Help us to live up to the person that you meant for us to be. In your name, we love you. Amen. And that, my friends, is a magnificent wrap to the morning routine. Thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate each 
and every one of you. I'm still struggling with that it's going to end on Friday. But it's going to end on Friday. And who knows what's going to be next. It's exciting just to think about what could be ahead. So until tomorrow when we meet again on The Morning Routine, don't forget, today, this very day, is a great opportunity for you to be the person that you are meant to be. I truly love each and every one of you. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.